Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome to another video. My name is Abby and this is Spend More Time in the Wild. Now I apologise if I sound a little bit under the weather, it's because I am between back-to-back -back expeditions and uh, basically I was just snorkeling in really really cold water <laughs> and then out in the pouring rain and wind of Iceland and I've definitely picked something up but um, I'm loving being back home for a little bit and one of my favourite things about being back home is looking after my kit, getting in and caring for stuff. In my tent, I always give it a full on wash down, make sure it's nice and dry um, and not going away to get any mold gathering. My tent pegs, I give them a clean. And my sleeping bag and my sleeping mat, I always hang up in air for a day or two and just sort of let them gain their loft, fully dry out if there's been any dampness. And basically just give it a little bit of TLC and I thank you for looking after me on an expedition. Now speaking of sleeping bags, we're going to be talking a little bit more in depth about this sleeping bag. Beautiful orange colour, isn't it? This is the Rab Alpine 600. Now I was actually given this bag by Rab um, after being invited up to their headquarters in Sheffield earlier this year. Now it was a really educational and insightful experience. We were basically talked through the evolution of the company and how they are taking as many active steps as possible to become environmentally considered and basically implement as many sustainability policies as possible. Because for them as a company and for us as consumers, you know, we need to take hands and basically step up towards helping to protect the natural environment that we love to get out and explore and play, you know, and, and by buying responsibly and creating responsibly, we can really help uh, make a difference there and so it was a very educational experience actually and off the back of it they gave us this sleeping bag to have a play with now for me whenever I do a review it's always 100% honest in my opinion doesn't matter whether I bought it myself or whether I have been given it and I always get out on the trail whether I'm hiking or cycling or in the van or whatever it is um, and I properly play with the piece of kit and I have had a few months now of using the sleeping bag, the Rab Alpine 600, and today we're going to dive into some facts and some of the opinions that I have about this bag. So it does come in a stuff sack. Let's just jump in. It does come in a stuff sack, but it's not in it right now. <laughs> um, just because I wanted to get it out to show you because it's nice and orange. Now, I don't think that the colour should be a buying factor, but big but that being said <laughs> as somebody who spends a lot of time out and about on the trail when you've done back-to-back -back miserable days coming into a tent with lots of colors it's just a really really nice experience and so the orange here just ticks a box for me it's very very happy orange <laughs> that complements the rest of my kit quite nicely um, that being said how does it perform as a sleeping bag well first of all when would you even want to use this sleeping bag it is a three season mountaineering sleeping bag. What that means is you can use it for spring, summer and autumn. So the shoulder seasons in particular. And depending on where you are and what you're doing and how you sleep, whether warm or cold, you could potentially even take this thing out into winter season. Um, its comfort is minus five, its extreme is minus nine. For me, I just find that an irrelevant rating because everybody sleeps differently. Some days I'll sleep really hot, some days I'll sleep really cold. Kind of doesn't matter what the rating of the sleeping bag is. So long as it's within that season that I'm in, um, I'm probably gonna need to, I don't know, sort myself out or adapt it some way because the human body is weird. <laughs> um, so that's sort of a little bit about sleeping bag. It weighs in at 1,050 grams so it's not the lightest bag out there but again for most people this is a very good all-encompassing sleeping bag because it's the most people are going to need you know not everybody's out in extreme blizzards and the cold and the snow and snow holes and all that shebang um, most people are just out when it's nice weather and in when it's not <laughs> so um, I don't find 1050 grams too heavy at all it retails at 260 pounds it's not the cheapest out there, but for me, again, when it comes to buying kit, it's an investment. It's an opportunity to induce something, um, excuse me, to choose something that has had the environment considered when it comes to its manufacturing. Um, and it's to invest in something that is going to last you for a long, long time. Now, RAB also have their repair and clean services. So there really is no reason <laughs> why you would need to get a new sleeping bag anytime soon after purchasing something like this. Let's talk about some of the facts of the bag then. So other than being orange and nice and filled with down, um, it's it's got a few other sort of thoughtfully considered 
features to it as well. So it's a classic mummy design in that it's got a hood, it goes over your head, you can strap in that heat. This whole 3D design here has been really carefully considered to trap in the heat. So you've got down covering the entire um, bag, it's 650 fill power down. You've got these baffles that are constructed so the down isn't going to end up just at the toe box. It's going to stay fixed and, and around your body, um, maximising that retention of the heat. Um, you've got that angled toe box in the design as well. So again, just keeping that down around your feet and your head where you lose the heat most. Um, coming down to the side, when you order your sleeping bag, you can choose a size, short, regular or long. And you can also choose the side that you have the zip on. For me, I have the zip on the left. This is a YKK anti-snag zip. So the zip is designed to not get stuck, essentially. Um, I have had it get stuck a couple of times. Uh, but more than that, I've actually just found it so effective that when I sleep at night, it just gradually comes undone. Um, and so that's been a little bit annoying at times. Uh, but there's definitely, it's, it's definitely nothing compared to having the sticking zip because that is so frustrating. Um, coming down to the bottom, there's also a zip there as well, so you can unzip your, your feet if for some reason you want to do that. Stick your feet out, get a bit of air. Um, and then around the back of the zip, there's this baffle design. Uh, so this big strip of fabric that's filled with down that pushes against the zip to basically prevent the loss of heat when you're sleeping through the zip. Um, and again, I found that very effective. This this very snuggly, nice sleeping bag. The worst thing about the sleeping bag, to have a half second rant, is it so well made and so snuggly that you don't want to get out of it in the morning. <laughs> That's my one biggest complaint. Um, anyway, joking aside, there's also a baffle going around the shoulders and you can pull that nice and tight, just like around um, your face area. There's another uh, draw cord here, so you can pull that super, super tight and really lock yourself in if that works for you, um, if you don't mind the suffocation factor. For me, that tends to be what I do, just full on caterpillar into my sleeping bag and then not remove until the dreaded wee comes along and then you're like, oh, I can't ignore you any longer. Come on, we've all been there. <laughs> um, the hood is a really great fit. There's lots and lots of movement. I actually keep my sleeping pillow in the hood, so everything's just attached to me. Um, and overall, this this design, this head design, I, again, I just think has been really well thought through. Um, and through my experiences, I don't know how many nights I've done this, about 50 nights now. Um, it's just proved to be really effective and really locks in that heat. Now, the only other feature we've got up here in this region is this um, zipped pocket. I find the zipped pocket a very good size. I can put my phone in it, for example, but I don't like the placements. Um, for me, it just ends up sitting on my neck and I don't find that very comfortable when there's a phone in it because there's basically just a phone pushing against my neck. Um, the other th reason why I don't use it is because Generally, when I'm keeping electronics on my person in the night, it's because I want to help to keep them warm to minimise the loss of battery life. And so having it again here on this sort of position near my neck, it's not getting close to any of my body heat. So I would have preferred um, the zipped pocket to be a little bit further into the bag, but that's just purely personal preference. Um, so yeah, but otherwise <laughs> that's really the main features that you can visibly see. I mean, I suppose to even state the obvious, let's talk about the fabric. So the fabric is a 20 denier weave, um, which is not particularly dense. That's why the odd feather escapes. Um, denier is all about the density of the weave. Um, to give you an example, waterproofs very often are 70 denier weaves, so it's much more dense, there's a lot more fibres going on, and that means it's more snag resistant. So 20 denier implies that there's less fibres, there's more gaps, um, and uh, obviously that helps with the, the loft of the down um, and just the overall lightness of the product. Um, now it is uh, Pertex Quantum. It has got a slight durable water repellency finish and also wind resistancy as well. Um, I haven't found that to be hugely successful. Wind resistancy I haven't tried, uh, but the water repellency, when I've been in my tent and there's been heavy condensation, I have found the odd spot water has sort of seeped in um, and obviously getting wet down is really not ideal. That's another reason why I air everything after a trip. Um, so that could just literally be a case of, I need to just send it off to Rab and they'll reproof it um, because anybody can do that. They have that as, a, as a, a system. So that's something for me to consider doing. And then inside is, is recycled uh, nylon. Uh, so again, 20 denier weave, it's all sort of the same. And then the down itself is, um, it's a 650 fill power down. It is duck down. 
So one of the things we learnt uh, in a very cool way, actually, seeing it all there in front of us, when we went to the RAB headquarters, was about down, the different fill powers of down and the different quality of down. Um, so from duck down to goose down, all the way up that big scale. Um, it's very, again, very educational and insightful um, and learning about sort of the RDS certification, how you can trace the down all the way back to the farm where the animals are from. It's just, it's a fantastic system. And then other than that, there's not much else to be talking talking about I mean we've talked about the baffles so the down isn't gonna just move up and down your body um, the whole thing for me is just really thoughtfully designed as I keep saying and having now used this for so many nights it's it's, it's just a really nice sleeping bag everything about it just feels really nice against your skin um, it's not rustly it's, it's very quiet um, and whilst it doesn't pack down super small for me this is this is my go-to shoulder season sleeping bag now um, personally, I wouldn't be picking this one up in, in the height of summer, um, but what's surprising, <laughs> it is the height of summer right now, but look at the sky, it's bright blue, yes, it's clear, there are no clouds, and it has been dropping to about 3-4 degrees uh, at night, and so actually, this is a perfect sleeping bag for this kind of condition. Um, so yeah, it's, it's just been a really fun bag to be using. I've had many, many, many good nights sleep. And of course it also comes with a big bag. Um, you don't want to be packing down products away, uh, tightly when you're not using them. That should really only be for travel because you want to help them maintain their loft. So you get a big rab bag that you can stuff it in, um, loosely <laughs> when it's just stored away. Uh, so that's, that's another thing that comes with this bag, but, um, yeah otherwise all i can say is you know head to your nearest outdoor store try before you buy sleeping bags are usually just hanging up there and you can pull them off and get in them and see how they feel what's the right length for you um and i think again if you're not sure what sleeping bag you want because you're not sure about your activities or the time of year or ultimately you're just out and about all the time that's where something like this can be a really good spend um, in a sense that it just ticks a lot of boxes in terms of when you can use it, where you can use it, how you can use it, um, and that sort of thing. So I hope this has been interesting and helpful for you guys. If you're interested in RAB, do head to their website, find out about some of their policies. Um, for me, they are just really leading the way uh, when it comes to environmental standards. And we too can help them with that and every company with that by um, basically purchasing responsibly, um, fixing stuff when they break, buying secondhand. We don't always have to buy brand new. There's so much we can do as users of the outdoors to help to protect the environment that we love and play in. So guys, whatever adventures you're having, enjoy, send some pictures, and until next time, stay wild. I'll see you soon. Bye.